Hello, and welcome to the weekly broadcast of Strategic Speaking for Results. I'm Elizabeth Bachman, your host, and today I'm talking about how to lead a meeting that doesn't waste everybody's time. I've spoken before about how to get out of meetings if you are in a corporate culture where there are more meetings all day, so many meetings that you don't have time to think or actually do your work. Today, I want to talk about how to, what to do when it's your turn to lead the meeting and how to make it really worth people's time. Now, there are three pieces to it. First of all, before the meeting. Secondly, during the meeting, leading the meeting. Thirdly, after the meeting. And these are all very basic, you know, meetings tend to be different. Some of this, you may have heard some of this before, but I see these mistakes being made over and over again. So time to say them one more time. First of all, before the meeting, you want to send out the invitation, make sure that it's only the people you need. You don't invite the whole company. There is a sort of a human tendency that if you're invited, you have to say yes. So help your colleagues out and see, do you really need a meeting? If this is information that's supposed to go to more than 10 people, it could probably be an email instead. Good meetings, good reasons to have meetings, maximum five to eight people are for brainstorming or if you need to resolve something that's been going back and forth on a Google Doc with lots of upgrades and you could actually just all get together and knock it out and make a decision. Those are good reasons. But an update or a review, that should be that should be an email. So do you really need it? And then as you're planning this, trust your people, if they're not invited to the meeting, it's okay. Let, the, let them know that you trust that they're doing their work and you'd rather have them do their work rather than attend a meeting where their, their participation isn't really necessary. This is something uh, I've talked about on these broadcasts before. It's a good thing that you can do to work within your team to make sure that you're not inviting everybody, that you're only inviting the people who really need to be there. And also that nobody's feelings are hurt if they're not invited because you trust them. Trust. We forget that word. It's all too easy to forget it. Sec secondly, have an agenda. You know, if you're going to have the second thing in the pre-meeting is have a clear agenda that you're actually going to follow and send it out in advance. The third thing is, if you have something important, if this is a big meeting, you really need to discuss this, figure this out, get some of the key players involved in advance. Send them one question, two questions, perhaps, so that you so that they're ready to make their points. This will help, this will help a whole lot. And, and, and it should be obvious that you're gonna set out an agenda, but I am appalled at how many of my clients say, agenda, we never get the agenda, or we get the agenda 30 seconds in advance, and I don't have time to listen, to look at it because I've got meetings up right up until the same, the time that this meeting starts. So have an agenda that you intend to follow. Also in advance, Assign roles like the timer, the note taker, the person who's going to monitor the, the waiting room if you're on Zoom, so that if somebody is late and they, they can talk to that person who's monitoring the tech so that you can lead the meeting and not have to be distracted with that. This, by the way, is a good tip. That's this, by the way, is a good thing to get the introverts involved. If you've got the introverts on your team, give them a role where they're visible. Then uh, the second thing is during the meeting, make sure it's only 30 minutes, 45 minutes, actually not even 35 minutes, make it 25 minutes and, and stop. 
If you go off on a tangent, call a timeout. That's what the that's what the timer is for. And establish in advance that you're going to do this. You're going to stick to the time. So that if there's if you're on a tangent, it sounds really interesting, then ask the people who are on a tangent to write it up and get back to you or set up a separate conversation so that you can park it and not have to not have to waste everyone else's time following an interesting tangent. And then summarize. Make sure you summarize and you assign next steps during the meeting. This means you have to allow time for this and you know, allow the last three to five minutes to summarize and decide who's going to follow up on what. This is also where you can enroll your note taker. Make sure your note taker is keeping track of that. And, um, and then remember, there's the human tendency when a conversation is ending to say, oh, one more thing. Oh, one more thing. We all do it. I do it. I know lots of people who do it. Resist that tendency. When you're going to end, end. So that people could go to the bathroom, get a drink of water, things like that. And then thirdly, after the meeting, send the summary right away. Figure out the follow-up. Set a time with your note taker when you're by when your note taker is going to get the summary to you, and then you can send out the summary and assign whatever next steps are important. Put that on your calendar. Make sure you have the time to follow up. And then you will be the one who leads the meetings that are worth people's time and makes them want to be there, want to pay attention to you. This has been Elizabeth Bachman, Strategic Speaking for Results. I'll see you on the next one.